Welcome, everybody, to Conversations with Archbishop Kurtz. It's November. Archbishop, welcome. Oh, thank you, Brian. It's, it's, it, first of all, it's good to be in the new Archdiocesan Pastoral Center, and it's good to be approaching Thanksgiving. That's right. We See, we're on the road again. Instead of using our usual studio at the Maloney Center, we're on the road, and part of today what we're going to do is give you a chance to see and learn a little bit about the history of our brand new facility, the Pastoral Center, here on the property of Holy Family Parish. We're going to talk about that in the sec second segment. And then in the third segment, we're going to talk about what is the Archdiocese. Now, that's a silly topic, maybe, but, you know, people ask us all the time, exactly what does that word mean? So we're going to talk about that in the third segment. But the first, first segment, Archbishop, let's spend some time talking about a topic I know you have been speaking about around the country and teaching us in significant ways here in Louisville. Um, the theology of abundance. Yeah. So let's talk first. What, what Brian, do you mean by Brian, that? Brian, thanks. I'm really, I'm really happy to talk. I get excited talking about the theology of abundance. It, it, uh, it flows from the gospel. I mean, Jesus, I guess the, the best verse would be uh, the gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, verse 10. I like that because I can remember it. Uh, but it's, uh, I came that they might have life and have it in abundance or have it abundantly. And it's, it's this notion that God in his graciousness has given us so many gifts, gifts that we'll never tap. And for us to be stingy or to think that somehow I have to promote myself over another uh, just misses the point. Uh, the example that is often used is the call of St. Matthew. St. Matthew, a tax collector who, who knew how to get people to give him money. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I like to say that after Jesus called Matthew, Levi becomes Matthew the Apostle. Right. And all of a sudden, it's not so much getting people to give him money so much as inspiring others to share. That captures, I think, uh, the, the, the robust nature of what it means to be a, a practitioner of the theology of abundance. We're really looking at how we inspire ourselves and others to share the gifts we've been given. And it's an exciting thing to do. That scripture quote from, from John's Gospel, uh, Pope St. John Paul II really used that theme at the, at the World Youth Day he had here in ah. this country. I remember that being a significant theme. And that's one of the first places I remember someone in that leadership talking about the gifts of abundance. So, and you know apart. where I heard it, uh, Bishop Gaynor, now yeah. the bishop in Harrisburg, but was the bishop in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, he uh, has that as his, his Episcopal motto, oh, very good. that they may have life abundant. In abundance. Now, can you dissect a little for us? Get to some of the characteristics. What does that look like? Sure, sure. Let's, let's talk a little bit because I've been trying to figure out, well, for, for the average person, what, what exactly does that mean? Yeah. Now, one of the most obvious things is it means uh, the notion of communio, which means uh, we are called not one at a time, but together. In a sense, uh, somebody said it very vividly. They said, I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to go by myself. I want to go with you. Yeah. And, and I think that's a very vivid way of talking about communio. Communio really is saying, uh, I don't want to succeed only myself. I want another person to succeed. I want everyone to succeed. And that really is the vision of God. God's universal call to salvation says that each one of us made in God's image have these gifts and we're all called to have fruitful lives. And communio means that I'm as interested in you or others succeeding as I am in, in myself. So that's the first thing. A second one is when we have the opposite, a theology of scarcity. It means there's only so much praise or so much money or so much whatever, fame, to go around. Uh, the theology of, of, of scarcity shows a lack of trust. I think when we trust and have confidence that God, confidence that God will, live, will lead, then in some ways um, we, we, we basically forsake uh, scarcity and, and think about abundance, about how, how God is calling everybody. Uh, there's kind of a third image, and that is when we are engaged in changing or in asking people to give of themselves, three people are affected. When somebody gives to another, the person who receives, the person who gives, whose, whose heart grows greater, uh, and the person who asks. And, and, and that uh, triad, if you would, uh, is, is part of the theology of abundance, that no matter what our role is in a particular uh, 
uh, opportunity. Uh, we're all going to gain. One last thing, this is not the theology of prosperity, the prosperity gospel that we often hear people talk about, this notion that uh, if I give to others, somehow God will reward me with, with tangible gifts. No, it's, it's really saying that when I give in abundance, my priorities change. Boy, that's countercultural, oh, Archbishop. I see things different. Yeah. And so uh, they're just a, a few of the, of the themes, if you would, of the theology of abundance. It occurs to me that it's another way to reflect on it is the um, God gives us what we need rather than what we want. Ah, that's Help good. me with that a little bit. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's exactly right. Uh, uh, what we want, it's kind of like Christmas time. You know, and yeah. we often had wanted a gift and we never got it, and it took us five years to find out why God didn't, <laughs> <laughs> didn't do it. But in His wisdom, uh, our wants can catch up eventually with our needs. In other words, uh, the more simple we live our lives, uh, the better off we can uncover God's plan. And that's, that's exactly the theology of abundance has us uh, maybe minimizing and lowering what we need, excuse me, what we want, yeah. in order to simply see not only what we need, but what the person I'm serving needs. This is a good season to talk about it being Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving month. Thanksgiving, absolutely. So, so, um, and, and being grateful is part of it, but there's a little bit of a um, culture of um, get enough and get more, uh, collect. Uh, it's almost a knee-jerk thing, Brian, too. Well, I, I think we become victims of it. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's not something we necessarily think about. But what's true, and, is, and, and you would agree with this, when we are grateful, that automatically makes us generous. When we open our hands in gratitude to God, our hands are open also in sharing with others. And those go together so clearly. So gratitude and generosity, the keynotes really at Thanksgiving, isn't it, uh, go hand in hand. I know one of the things you say is it expands your heart. It does. It expands your yeah, heart. Absolutely. That's great. Theology of Abundance. You know, you've been teaching that for a while. Thank you, because that's a good lesson for us as a, a local community. And I'm glad that people like the National Catholic Stewardship Council invited you to speak about that in Atlanta earlier this fall. But mostly I thank you because you help us practice Thanksgiving all the time with this thing. Well, let's keep alert, because I learn when I see someone else being generous. Yeah. I learn, wow, I could do a little more even. So, so thank you, Brian. Thanks Very so much good. for this. Thanks, everybody, for being part of this first segment. In the second segment, we're going to turn the tables. Archbishop usually interviews a special guest. This month, he's got me. You're the, you're so the guest. We'll come back in just a few minutes.